Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different 12 YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day like me. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all is surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you all. Before you leave, definitely hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop content, you guys can hit that get that notification to come into Different 12 and learn about your girl. Speaking of coming and learning, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, I gotta now put that in, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit the subscribe button for your girl. Definitely appreciate it, you guys. So today is Wednesday, hump day, the first full week in January. Excuse me, not January, June. <laughs> Wishing it was January, so to speak. Um, it's already June, uh, six months in of 2023. The first full week, you guys know on Wednesdays, we do our podcast content. So coming to you guys, um, we have um, my interview I did with Miss Jessica Bell of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so big shout out to her and her podcast, the Unmuted uh, Mike Podcast. Um, this was a very special one for me because this was the first podcast I did um, following the death or the passing of my mother. Um, I had to take a couple of months off and make sure that my mental health was up to par and you know I, I was able to do this because this was done with a lot of emotions listening back on this interview I, I realized like the reason why I was talking so fast is because I didn't want to cry but um uh, this was the first interview I did back uh, on the scene uh, with promoting my book and my business as well as myself and a uh, big shout out to again Miss Jessica for having me we had a great time talking about you know my testimony um, you know dealing with grieving and healing from it and moving forward with it as well as my book what if a controversial paradigm shift and my business third eye llc excuse me third eye ent llc um and so so much more you guys and rather me you know yip yapping and jaw jacking how about you guys just get into it and check out the audio interview for yourself and when we come back on i'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in different tour. yeah here it is hello everybody welcome to another episode of unmute your mic my name is Jessica Bell. I am your host from Kansas City, Missouri, as always. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much. And if you are returning, thank you for being a part of the Unmute Your Mic family. Uh, before we get started, please make sure to go over to unmuteyourmic.org. There you can see previous episodes, subscribe to our newsletter, purchase merchandise, all of that good stuff. And you can also like and subscribe and follow on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or any place you can find a podcast. I'm so excited for our conversation today. I love meeting new people, getting to hear their stories, um, just learning about the things that people overcome. So different, if you could please introduce yourself and let us know just a little bit about you. Hey, Queen. How is it going, Miss J? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, hi to everybody out there. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. That is my name. Um, thank you for having me on your show. I'm excited to be here and to finally be unmuted. <laughs> People have been trying to mute me lately. So happy to be a part of your show that's unmuted, ironically speaking. Right. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Can you let us know just a little bit about you, your background, um, your history? Yes, ma'am. Um, but before I get started, let me let you know right now, I'm long-winded, so if I need, need to jump in and stop me at any time, you go ahead. But um, just answering your question. So, um, I'm like I said, my name is Different. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 30 years old. Um, I guess giving you guys an overview background about uh, who I am in, in my story. Um, I, I'm an author, a motivational speaker, and a CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, motivate, and inspire or entertain all at once. Um, as far as my background, like I said, I, I grew up in Houston, um, had a pretty good upbringing up until the time I was around 11. Um, then me and my family, we ended up homeless on the street for the next three years, uh, basically living in literally from pillow to post, um, you know, shelters, cars, parks, bus stops, you know, strangers house, even a, at one point in time, a crack house, you know, we I stayed there. And so and at the age of 14, um, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative 
And for the first six months of being in CPS, I tried my hardest to come home. Um, however, I found out through another uh, foster care that if you stay in, in the state of Texas, if you age out of foster care, that they paid for your uh, four years to college. And so right then and there, you know, a light bulb went off in my head, Miss J, and I had to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts. And within those six months, my family, you know, they found out where I was and they tried to get me to come home. And I told them, no, I'm going to stay because I have a way to go to college now. Um, and so I duped it out, you know, four years, you know, in CPS, you know, sh being shuffled around until I graduated. And I graduated from Elsick High School on the southwest side of Houston and um, went to Sam Houston State University. And, you know, there was just another blessing in disguise. I did great things, you know, being there. I started my own student organization titled Paired For It, an organization that was tailored to, you know, fostering to kids that were in the system as well as, you know, the youth in general. We had three different teams, you know, uh, motivational, volunteering, and educational team. And that's where my motivational book was planted. We would go to different high schools and speaking with them and sharing my testimony with them. A lot of them at the end of it would come to me and tell me, wow, you inspired me. Now I want to go. Well, I'm, in, I'm in the same situation. And so right there, my, my that book of motivational speaking was planted. Um, I also was blessed with the opportunity to travel abroad. You know, my senior year, I think, uh, what was that? fall 2012, yeah, around that time, I, I got to go to Kim Young University in South Korea. And that right there was just another door, you know, another bug being planted uh, with my travel bug. I got within that opportunity of being over there, I traveled to eight other different countries while being over there. And um, thus far, um, since the pandemic or until the pandemic, I'd been to just about 50 countries. But um, as well as, you know, I ended up graduating you know, with my background, my, my BA in international business, as well as two minors in economics and um, business communication. I also, a few years later, got my master's degree in entrepreneurship. And again, I'm also a Texas real estate agent, not to mention now an author and the CEO of my own business. And so God is good. Uh, you know, no matter how, you know, my story may have started off, you know, in, in traumatizing and, and, and traumatic experiences, it's going to end in triumph. Um, but with all that being said, Miss J, you know, all those notches and accomplishments under my belt, I still wasn't a happy person, you know, on the inside. I was, you know, still dealing with the childhood past and trauma, you know, what I've been through. And a lot of it carried over into my adulthood and it plagued me. It, it, it well, I squandered the opportunity. It was me. I did it. Um, it was just, you know, coming up in that environment where chaos was normal for me, you know, and when I got taken out of that situation and placed into foster care, ironically, I was placed in really good foster homes. Each and every one of the foster parents I was placed with, I noticed they had nice houses, they went to college and, you know, had, had good paying jobs and that was something I wanted. However, for me, I felt, oh, it was too good to be true or it's not going to last. So for me, I'm the captain of the ship. I decide, I decide when it's time to sink it. And so I would sabotage those situations and get kicked out and, you know, move on to the next one and be the same thing. All the way up and even to, you know, college having, you know, very off-putting off personality because I didn't trust people or, or trust that, you know, it would last long. And so, you know, getting career-wise, those type of traits started to affect me. And so it, uh, it was an experience to where um, I had a meeting but a well-connected person to where I could have been put on, if you will, back. This is like going on 19 years ago when I was early in my early 20s. I'm 31 now. And so um, <clears throat> what it was um, is that, you know, I had dealing with those demons in the back of your head. You know, you, you, we all have them. We tell you, you know, you're not good enough or this isn't going to work or they just, you know, t showing you pity because, you know, you're a foster kid or, you know, they're not going to like you. You're too country. You're too ghetto. You talk too fast. All those voices in the back of my head, you know, it got to me into where, you know, I purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in their mouth. And until this day, I, I not so much regret it as much, but until up until now, I still have some regret to it ate at me and to the point to where I said, you know, I had to face the ugly truth about myself that, you know, I needed to go and fix my issues, whatever that it is I'm going through, whatever I went through in the past, it may or may not been, you know, my fault. It may have not been in my control, but however, somehow, some way, it's my problem to deal with, and it's on me to deal with. And so, 
for me, you know, being in my mid twenties, I didn't miss that little notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy or we don't talk about our issues. You know, I came up again from that environment to where, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. We don't talk about, you know, who touched you or what's, what's doing this and that, you know, not saying that happened to me, but just saying, you know, that, that type of situation, you're meant to keep it a secret. You have to keep it bottled up. And that's just the type of, you know, personality that is ensued with me that's what molded me coming up and that I had to break out of that mode and it wasn't until you know I just faced the fact that I needed to go get help and fix my mental issues and take my butt to therapy and that's just what I did and so um consistently now I've been going to therapy for about, you know two and a half years now and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I've done so I'm proud to say that I did so because you know look at what came out of it now it, it encouraged me my, my therapist encouraged me to you know reached to hire me in doing so, you know, I wrote a book, you know, started my own business, you know, I'm talking to you now, I'm, I'm getting out there to the world, people are hearing my story all over, you know, people in Sri Lanka know who I am, you know, <laughs> you know, looking at my YouTube channels and stuff, and so, um, all praises and honor and glory goes to God, you know, because he's the one who brought me through it, and, you know, who's still, you know, using me, you know, as a vessel, and so, uh, you asked the question oh. about me. It's me in a nutshell. <laughs> That's different for you. And listen, you have so much going on and you have accomplished so many things. And I think what's beautiful about it is that I, you're only at like the tip of what it is you're going to accomplish <laughs> in your life because you're only, what, 31. So you were talking about some of the things that had happened to you, you know, when you were younger as far as being in foster care. And so... What do you think it is that's inside of you that made you not quit and throw in the towel when things were difficult? Oh, the struggle. The places I've been, the dark places I was I was literally in, you know, sleeping in those cars and in parks and literally sleeping with one eye open and knives under my pillows, you know, having to wash my back. I didn't want that for myself for the rest of my life, nor my kids. That's why, you know, I vowed in my 20s not to fall in love, get married, or have kids, because I wanted to make sure I had myself straight for myself, my husband, and my children to where even if I don't have a man in my life, I'm still able to take care of me and mine. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 fear of, of struggling and living hand to mouth, pillow to post all my life, and seeing that with my family, that was that's also a thing that I prayed to as God as well, for Him to allow me to be the one in my family before it even before I even got placed in foster care. I prayed this prayer to Him, uh, although I didn't know it was going to take me through the mud to get to the beauty, but I understand it now. I, I but I asked God, I asked Him to, for me to be the one in my family to break that generational curse and create generational wealth. And so, and this this is how He did it. He took He handpicked me. Whatever reason, whatever happened, I ended up in that situation while I was in, you know, CPS, and he put me in that situation, and he allowed me to see something different. True enough, I was still going through, you know, my issues of being a teenager growing up, thinking I'm grown and thinking I know it at all, but at, at the same point in time, it was still God's plan, if you will. And, you know, all I can say now is look at me now. Those four words give me so much peace and comfort for what I went through and what I'm going through. And it, it keeps me motivated not to go back. So that if you, that answers your question, <laughs> I, I, I just uh, fear yeah. going back to where I came from. And, and I can't ever forget it. And I won't ever forget it. That's what keeps me humble because I've been stuck here too long. I, I'm still, I mean, I, I don't live grand now. <laughs> I mean, in my little two-bedroom apartment in my little room right now, I don't live grand like that. And, 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 and when I do one day, I, that I'm going to, pass along the blessing if you will you know i have so much plans to you know help people i cannot not the way have god has has blessed me i can't just you know keep it all to myself and not pass it on you know what i mean so when i get into that position to where i am able to not only help myself but help others uh, it will happen you know mark my words <laughs> and so um and yes, um, it's very encouraging. You know, I love when I have conversations with people and their background was not like just this, oh, everything was perfect. And then I just got all these things and it was all amazing. But like it was mm -hmm. full of struggle and things that maybe some people, a lot of people maybe have never even 
experience that, you know, and I hear you talking about your relationship with God. Um, so which mm-hmm. makes me think that you're a believer, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I'm a believer, I just don't have no religion. Now, I will say that um, if I can interject with for those out there listening, I don't want to disrespect or interpose on anybody of, of, of their beliefs, but this is my belief. I cannot claim I had to lose religion in order to gain a relationship with God. I had been down that road with me personally, you know, going to church and, and uh for me, it turned into living for them and not for God. I was posting little things, trying to make sure they saw me as a good Christian, but not really living for God. And so I had to remove myself from the church, me personally, in order for me to truly understand what God love is, what he's about, and what he has me destined, has destined for me to do on this earth. And so that took me, you know, getting quiet and getting along with God. And so for me, as far as my spiritual route, I, I believe in high power. That's in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as well as I, I believe in prayers and meditation and chakra healing. As you see, I have my, my crystals in my hand. I like to hold in my hand as I talk. So I use my throat chakra. As you can see, I'm articulating myself as best as I can because I'm using my throat chakra to do so. Um, so I, I love doing, you know, spiritual meditation and, and reading about, you know, Kadani yoga and astral projection as well. So as, as far as my spiritual side, that's, that's what it is. But no disrespect to anybody else out there, whatever your religious beliefs are, they are this, that, and I respect them, and I hope that people can respect mine, but if not, that's cool. Keep it moving. <laughs> well, you, well, you brought up a really good point, because you said you had to, let me make sure I quote it right, you said you had to lose religion to gain relationship. So, mm-hmm. in doing that, in, in losing religion to gain your own personal relationship, how has that shifted and changed your life and your perspective on the things that you've gone through. Because I want to think about you instead of just blurting out. Since I want to think about what you asked me and then ponder on it. And so as far as, you know, peace of mind, is nothing like it. And as, as young as I am, I know I ain't really going through no life crisis as far as like being married or having children. But I done been through some things, you know. You know, I, I healed my, like I was telling you before the show got started, my mother passed away in my arms the day after Christmas. And I, I never seen such of a, a beautiful and peaceful death as before. And and just to, to elaborate on God's grace and mercy, um, she was a dialysis patient. My mother, Vern Show, Renette Shennifer, rest in peace to her. Um, she stayed on the machines for 17 years. She put up a mighty long fight, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays three to four needles, three to four hours getting poked and, and, and uh, towards the end, she fought as long as she could, as hard as she could. And she did that for the love of her children and her grandson. Um, God could have took her on December the 8th. Um, but she coded, she died uh, actually twice. She um, had, um, <clears throat> she coded around like 1 a.m. and she was pronounced dead for five minutes and 57 seconds. But God brought her back to us and allow for her to stay with us a little longer, for us to have time to say our goodbyes and be there with her. Me and my brother, we were right there by her side. He, he couldn't take it like I could, but we I know it gave her peace to know that we were right there by her side. And that's just how graceful and merciful God is because he, she was afraid that we would come home and find her, you know, slumped over or, or something like that, or we wouldn't be there for, I was afraid that I wouldn't be there for us. That's just how, how merciful, and he may not answer all the prayers you want, but the ones you really, really, truly know you need in your heart that are needed for you, he always, always suffice. Just know that. And so for me, when you ask that question, what does it give peace of mind? Just knowing, you know, I don't have to, I'm not worried about nobody else's judgment because I know it's God. He's when I wake up, I'm able to wake up in the morning, look at myself and smile at myself in the morning and tell myself, I love me. I forgive me. I know God loves me. And so that feeling, that joy is, is, is priceless. There's nothing nobody can take from you and only God can give to you. And that's just, <laughs> you, 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 I don't want to get too, too deep into it, but it's nothing like knowing, you know, nobody can touch that. Nobody can take that from you unless you give it to him. You have to be spiritually mature. You have to be spiritually strong. And what I mean by that is understanding that you are not going to get everything you want. Things are not always going to go the way you plan it. But just know and understand it. When God tells you no, he's telling you no for a reason. He's looking out for you. And for those who get mad and say, well, when I ask God for this, he don't answer me that. But you, you have to be spiritually mature. It's just like when mom and dad tell you no and it's no and you understand mad for a while, but you get over it. It's just how you have to be with God, and then he will eventually 
in due season when he says, not what you wanted, but when his will, according to his will, he will reveal the truth to you and what it was, why he took you through what you went through. And it gives you peace, or it, unless you want to. It's, it's some people out there that don't want peace, that want to stay stuck where they are. Me, I got tired of that mental bondage. I see, I saw myself, you know, being a person that, that, that smiled on the outside and was dying on the inside, like, like Robin Williams or Anthony Bourdain. You know, eventually you would hear all these great things about different, but then one day she went and offed herself. She took herself off the map. Why she do that? Nobody ever knows till you dig deep. So that's why with my business, Third Eye Entertainment, like I said, we try to bring social awareness into society in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. And we talk about these issues that are often swept under the rug, such as, you know, mental health, suicide prevention. And as well as, you know, other issues, injustice, systemic racism, domestic violence, child sex trafficking, you know, LGBTQ issues. We talk about it all here at Third Eye Entertainment because for me, I just made it a point in my life to know that, to, to show that I'm not going to be that person that succumbs to those statistics that, that you know, falls to depression. A lot of the time when you, I did a, a segment a while back on my um, YouTube channel about suicide prevention and I found that suicide uh, usually stems from mental health issues. If you look at somebody's, you know, background and what led up to them, you know, taking their lives, you mostly see it's due to, you know, a lot of the child or childhood trauma or things that they were going through as an adult that they couldn't take with life's issues. And and those people, you know, they didn't have people to talk to or, or you know, hobbies to keep them occupied or things to look forward to in life. And so, um, that's why I often tell people when it comes to mental issues and dealing with mental anguish, either depression, anxiety, feeling suicidal, please know anybody out there listening to me here right now, know that it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go talk with a therapist. Go talk with a family member, a friend. Go pick up a hobby. Go cut off those people, all those relationships that mean you know well. Go be those broken bridges. Go do what you have to do to better yourself and free yourself from that mental bondage. And once you do, it, it, it's, be, it's I can't even explain. You just gotta come and learn. That's my that's my tagline. Come and learn. So so once you do that, it's like no other. And, and again, for anybody out there that's going through you know depression or feeling suicidal or know somebody that's that's feeling suicidal that's listening to this podcast in the U.S., you can call this number right here right now one eight hundred. Two seven two two seven three eight two five five. Put that in your tag on once you're done, okay? Uh, again, one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Because it's, it's it's talking about you know suicide prevention and mental health awareness. You know, for me and in Third Eye Entertainment is very important because without it, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have lasted, especially with the death of my mother. You know, so me talking about it is very cathartic for me. It gives me hope because I know I'm not alone. It's always somebody. Once he shows, you know, air, it's people that come to me, you know, private messages or on my social media page telling me, wow, you know, I hear, you, hear what you're saying. I'm going through the same thing. So I know this gives me comfort that I'm not alone out there. And so, uh, again, for anybody out there listening, know that you are not alone out there. And even though I don't know you personally, you don't know me, I care about you. You matter to me. You matter to others. So don't don't go off the deep end to a, temp a temporary situation or an issue. I'm not trying to dismiss or minimize anybody's issues, what you were going through, because I, I can't walk in your shoes because I can't fit them. I can only fit mine. So I'm not minimizing what you were going through, but do know that it gets better. For those who can just, you know, must up the courage and pain, it's hard. It's never going to be easy. You have to accept that, again, being spiritually mature and accepting that nothing is going to be easy. You just have to be a soldier about it and must on through it and just know that it will be okay. It will be all right. And, and that's what God has shown me. And that's what, why I'm here today. You know, I got a book now because of that. You know, what if a controversial paradigm shift? This is because I got my mental health in check. I got real with myself. You know, I accepted what God was telling me. And, 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 and just face the fact and the ugly truth that I needed to go and fix my issues. Whatever you went through in your life, even as a child, it may, it, it wasn't your fault. It was out of your control. But somehow, some way, as an adult, it's on you to deal with. And so um, that, that's it on that part. But as far as, you know, getting the mental health in order and check, um, this is what it led to. Talking with my, my therapist, uh, being stuck in the house during the pandemic, I started writing a book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, 
boom, the day, um, May 25th, 2020, uh, the day George Floyd happened, he passed away. Um, him being from Third Ward, I'm from Fifth Ward, we're right next, the neighborhoods right next to each other. I wanted to get involved in the protest and having my voice being heard. Um, however, when the time came to do so, I couldn't. Uh, not because I got cold feet, but because I felt deeper about the issue. I wanted my voice to be heard, you know, not just in that moment of time, Ms. J, but longer afterwards, and even after I'm gone. And so going home, talking with God, being in tune with him, asking him what is it that I can do to put my mark on this world, as well as do something that's going to capture the world's attention and, and make them think. This is what he revealed to me piece by piece, you know, little by little, with dreams and talking with people and, you know, conversations, um, you know, watching the movie, The Help, you know, little little by little, I would ask these questions, you know, what if? And, and by the end of 2020, um, uh, I contacted a lawyer and she read the manuscript and she, she combed over it, she praised it, and then she asked a question that, you know, kind of dropped everything for me. And she was like, what's the name of your business? And I'm like, oh, what? Uh, what if this is my, my book? And I'm like, so that's one thing about life, you know. When you think you know something, it comes through and knock you off your high horse and reminds you you don't know nothing. So, no matter how old you are, how 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 many degrees you got in your belt, you're never too old to stop learning, or you, you never can learn enough. It's always something new to learn. And so for me, I had to hit the ground running, learning how to run a small business in Texas. It wasn't my initial thought to run a small business. I was going to be in real estate. That was my business. But um. March 2021 comes around and boom, Third Eye Entertainment LLC is formed. And the, the term Third Eye comes from, you know, being spiritually in tune with your Third Eye Chakra, uh, as well as with your heart. Once you have your heart and your mind in tune with one another, then you are allowed to see things beyond and you can accept it. And that is how you will be able to achieve things more clearer. Uh, and again, like I said, with Third Eye Entertainment, um, our model is a society, as, um, excuse me, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, motivate, and entertain all at once, as well as we have a creed that we live by. It's called Manifest, Plan, Prepare. And what that stands for is uh, as far as those who believe that there are myth of greatness and want to achieve that, they have to do these three following things. Number one, they have to manifest for it. They have to speak it into existence like no other. They have to remove all the doubt, all the fear, and replace it with their faith. They have to get it out on paper. They have to believe it before they receive it. And once you do that, you can move on to the planning part of it, writing things down on paper, putting plans to action, uh, having a, a backup plan, an exit plan, uh, you can't prepare for the unknown, but you can accept that the unknown is coming and understand that when it comes, you just have to handle it however it comes. So that's why you have to stack up and make sure you have your, your exit strategy as well as, you know, your, your financial plan as well. Um, once you have that, you move on to the preparation part of it. When I say prepare, that means preparing from the inside out going to fix your mental health issues, going to fix your financial issues, your physical issues, you know, hitting that gym back, going back to that gym, um, uh, cutting off those people that mean you know well and like going mend those broken bridges, you know, so that way once the things that you have manifested and prepared for, I'm excuse me, planned for come to you, you can be prepared for it. You will know how to handle and deal with it. You won't just squander it or run away from it like how I did when I was younger. When all the blessings came to me, I didn't know how to handle it. I was afraid of it. I was immature. I, you know, so I was going to it. And so now this is my motto by I will manifest what it is that I want. I believe that I'm, man, I'm destined for it. And then I will plan for it. And then I will prepare for it so that when it comes to me, I can be ready for it and then not squander that. And so manifest, plan, for manifest, plan, prepare for whatever it is in life that you want, and it will surely come to you. That is that with Third Eye Entertainment as far as our book. You know, what if a controversial paradigm shift? Again, it's a book that's written to encourage and inform constant thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America, and it's done through graphic but provocative illustrations. Uh, it tells us a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events, uh, categorizing four paradigm shifts such as historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And uh, before I go any further, Ms. J, I must state that this book does come with a disclaimer. If I can just put it up there for y'all right there so y'all can see. This is a grown folks only type of book. Although it's set up in rudimentary form as a childlike form, I have it this way because oftentimes children can see what adults can't. So from a child's perspective, what if? But please be un note that this is a grown folks only type of book or a mature adults only type of book so if you can't take this type of heat 
then don't bother coming to this kitchen. Uh, as far as the haters go, I'm not worried about them and those who, who say that this book is used as a tool for the black community to uprise against the white folks. No, it's not. It's simply meant to make you think and to push for, you know, systemic change and encourage that because, you know, what if this is a generation that plans to see for the next? You know, I'm well aware that change does not happen overnight and it does not happen with one person. But what if, you know, we all come together eventually over time and I believe it is my theory that when we talk about these issues that are hard to talk about, we can finally take acknowledgement and accountability for it. Then we can come to a resolution how to fix the issue and then move on and move forward with those things. And so it's my theory that, you know, having these conversations over time can create systemic change. Quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. I want to talk about systemic change now. And so uh, that's what it is with this. Um, as far as, like, like I said, the haters go, I'm not worried about them because one thing I learned from number 45 is you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. And so, you know, this man, he had, you know, four years in office and even afterwards, you know, 25% of the U.S. adult population, there's 75 million people plus still condoning his behavior. So that, again, resonates to me. So no matter who you are, what you're out there selling to the, pro- to the, to the public, somebody's going to buy it. So, again, anybody out there listening that they have dreams and hopes and they got haters out there, just know you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. And then no matter what, talking about it, good or bad, people are going to be talking. Their bill will be wrong. And that's the point about that's it. That's true. So, the I mission mean, you're, so, <laughs> you're so inspirational. You have so much that you are doing. I think I talk too much. <laughs> I don't think it's – well, I don't think so because I feel like – when you're telling your story, when you're sharing about the things that you're passionate about, the things that God has done for you, it just mm-hmm. comes naturally. Like, I didn't even it really does. have to ask you that many questions because you're I telling your story. <laughs> but I think that's what, I, I mean, I think that is, um, that's what happens when you get unmuted, right? That's what happens. Right. When thank you for allowing me to express myself. <laughs> thank you. Thank um, you. Thank I you think so think much. That, and, and I think that everything that you have gone through, I think it is beautiful how you have flipped it around and you are using it to oh, really God. pour back into the community and inspire other people and allow them to see that, hey, you can go through all of these very you know, traumatic or hard things and you can still become you know, what it is that you're called to be and you don't have to fall victim Amen. to them, but you will be triumphant on the other side. And so if Amen. people want to get connected with you, if they want to get connected with your organization or they want to purchase your book, how can they do that? Awesome. For anybody out there listening, uh, you can go to my website, differenceworld.net. Again, my name is spelled different, D-I-F-E-R-N-T. And uh, you can go there and find all of my social media handles. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, definitely uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can get my book available now at my website, again, differenceworld.net. It's also available on Amazon, but I'm going to be real with you. If you go to Amazon, you'll pay the high price, so they'll get the best price at my website, differenceworld.net. And uh, I want to take this time, Miss J, Miss Jessica, um, to thank you so much for allowing me to come on your platform, the Unmuted Podcast, and to, to share my story and promote my book and encourage others. Uh, I just want to take this time to remind you that you are a queen and you have a crown on your head and you are rocking it oh so well. Congratulations to you and all your success. And you keep going and keep going higher. I always, I always tell, I got a whole bunch of sayings, but I always tell people, you know, you don't they come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. So I think me and you, sister girl, we on our come up. So um, thank, thank you, you so much. for everybody out there listening. Again, don't forget, whatever it is in life that y'all want, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Different swirl. Come and learn. Please. I want to thank you so much for this conversation, for sharing your story, for being transparent, and thank you for all that you are doing in the community. I know that there are people whose lives are going to be in cha- going to be changed because they came in contact with you, because they hear you, because of the things that you are doing. So I want to thank you so much Amen. again. Um, even though even if some of the things you're doing right now are behind the scenes, we know that God is moving, and you will get the exposure Amen. that you need in due time. And so I thank you so much for everything that you were doing. Thank um, you. And last, and- I just- Yes, ma'am. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just want to say lastly, rest in peace to my mother, Vernshel Raynette Shinnevert, queen of my heart, my soul, my homie, my road dog. I'm going to dedicate this one to you, my first podcast interview back in, since her passing. Um, 
you know, everything I do, I do it, I'm going to do it for her now. And so I know she's up above watching over me and, you know, shining her love down on me. And then what a day to do this interview, you know, two, 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 two. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. And rest in peace to my mother, Vern Show, Shenanbert, you know, my, my angel, my guardian angel. And yeah, for anybody else, I said. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this podcast. Thank you for being. Thank you uh, for having me. <laughs> and for for um, continuing to push on and to not letting grief or anything hold you back from your calling. There are other people who are waiting for you to continue ongoing, no matter what's going on in your life. And so I thank you so much for doing that, for, for having you. your first podcast interview back with me. Um, and I thank you so much. And I will continuously be praying for you and for your family. I want to thank everybody for listening to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. As always, please go to unmuteyourmic.org. There you can find show notes. Learn more about today's guest. Um, I'll also put the links there for you to purchase her book and get in contact with her if you would like. Um, and then please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere that you can find the podcast. Don't forget to be bold, be heard, and continue to unmute your mic. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed listening to that audio interview I did with uh, the Unmuted Mic podcast with the lovely host, Miss Jessica Bell. Big shout out to her in Kansas City out there. She represented for them. Um, I uh, left her information in my description, so you guys be sure to check her out on, I think it's called Buzzsprout, uh, her podcast, and show her some love. Um, as well as definitely if you guys uh, enjoyed this podcast interview as you guys seen us talking about you know things that I had gone through at that time in my life as well as issues that were going on in society and today uh, considering we're talking about with my book what if a controversial paradigm shift we discussed you know the topic of systemic racism and what's going on and how we can come together as a whole in society and create systemic change instead of you know focusing on systemic racism and so anybody out there that hadn't got a chance to definitely you know run this back uh, and check it out as well as check her page out and again big shout out to her for having me uh, definitely appreciate the opportunity and again any other podcasters out there that would like for me to be a part of their podcast and, and, and collaborate with them definitely uh, get with me you can go to my website or you can hit me up via email uh, my website is differenceworld.net I usually do that towards the end but I'll give it to you guys now anyways it's just how it goes in Difference World we, we spontaneous around here so again differenceworld.net and book your girl I am free of charge as of now and, and so and again anybody out there or everybody out there that's watched the video if you like uh, our topic today and you enjoyed it and you want more uh, podcast interviews drop be sure to show me by liking sharing commenting and subscribing to my youtube channel i definitely appreciate all the love and support that i am getting please keep it coming as well as you guys don't forget now it's time <laughs> go to my website differenceworld.net and you guys can check out all my other social media handles, including my Twitter and my Instagram and so on and so on. Um, as well as, again, anybody looking for motivational speakers, grassroots conversationists, uh, looking for guests for their podcasts. Get at your girl. Go to my website, again, differenceworld.net and book me. I'm free of charge as of now. So get it in while you can. Uh, as well as, don't forget, again, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available on my website as well. Uh, this book, again, was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations, so be advised, you guys, if this is a system of content, it's intended for a mature audience. And so, if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. <laughs> Just bring your little fire bunk, you'll be okay. And the point of it all, you guys, is to have these conversations that needs to be had with people who like to sweep things under the rug and turn a blind eye to. That's the point of it all, being in a controversial form, is to get that attention and bring you to that round table, you know, to push that envelope to talk about accountability and, and acknowledgement and ultimately unity and systemic change. And so, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, guys. I truly appreciate, again, all the love and support you guys are showing me. Please keep it coming. Um, I'm just getting started. I'm almost two years down with my YouTube channel. I appreciate all the subscribers, all the comments, all the likes, all the views. 
Oh man, I just, it's, I can't wait to see, you know, three years from now where I'm going to be with this. And so I'm just going to keep going and keep moving and elevating up and you guys are helping me do it. And so I appreciate you guys. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, tomorrow is Thursday, you know, to, we usually do our pop culture review. Uh, last weekend, we, me and my nephew, we got a chance to go and see uh, what movie came out. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And so we did a movie re review on that. He likes to do the movie review, so I think I'm going to start having him be a good little uh, co-host on the movie reviews uh, for this summer. And so be on the lookout for that, you guys. I might, I might not drop it. I don't know. That's why you got to hit that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into different world and you come and learn what's going on, yeah? So be on the lookout for that, you guys. Uh, moving on down. What's going on? What, what we got next? Uh, yes. Can't forget, I'm into health check time, you guys. Anybody out there, including myself, that may be going through any type of mental anguish or, you know, illness, stress, struggle, whatever the case may be, Please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. May be taking, you know, therapy sessions, speaking with a family member, friends, picking up a hobby, breaking a bad habit, you know, getting your, your physical health in check, your financial health in check, you know, mending broken bridges, cutting people off when you know well, do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and not go off the deep end and possibly take anybody with you that, that deals with in case of depression, anxiety attacks, you know, bipolarism, uh, having suicidal thoughts, even dealing with bullying and, and relapse, man. Those are all uh, cases that entice with mental stress and anguish and often, you know, deals with, or entwines with mental illness and you know, sends you off the deep end if it's not checked. And so, Anybody out there that may need these mental health resources or know anybody who does, please feel free to share with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can visit mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can check out 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can check out incounseling.com. Again, incounseling is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, please remember it is on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, nobody else. Also, you guys, I want you to remember, whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through at this time in your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So don't do it. And also, just remember to keep do whatever it is that you have to to keep your mental health in check. Okay? So we're going to close out mental health. Uh, uh, check on a positive note and move forward. Uh, what else we got going on? You guys, use it towards in. Uh, again, I hope you guys enjoy watching or listening in to my audio interview with Miss Jessica of the Unmuted Podcast. Again, be sure to show us some love after you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, and, uh, definitely go check her out. And remember, you guys, whatever it is in life that you are feeling that you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and it will surely come to you guys. Different world, come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.